Oh, there's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. I'm not interested in this nymph. Nothing. Oh, good God. <laughs> Smaller, bigger, biggest. Enough for a good meal. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and I'm out in the woods doing some trout fishing. And I thought I'd do uh, a video about early season trout fishing. It's April, and it's still getting down to freezing temperatures at night. And fishing for trout this time of year is different from fishing for trout other times of the year. So I just want to talk to that a little bit. Um, ideal conditions, and I, you know, if you watch fishing shows, I mean, these people fish for a living. So they're not like the rest of us where they've got a full-time job and they've got obligations on the weekend. And they've got to pick their spots. You know, for me, over the course of my life, I've found... The best thing to do is go fishing when you've got the best chance of catching fish. So, uh, I thought I'd give a few tips about when the best time to go is, and then I'm going to go catch some fish and hopefully uh, prove <laughs> that I'm right. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> it's early April here. Uh, in where I live, Nova Scotia, Canada, you can't trout fish, freshwater fishing until the 1st of April. Trout season, uh, freshwater fishing really begins uh, early April. I mean, there's certain rivers and certain systems, there's all kinds of rules and that sort of, but generally speaking, okay? That being said, the fact that trout season begins in April doesn't mean that you're gonna catch trout on April 1st. You can, uh, and anyone that spends enough time and puts enough effort in is gonna catch fish eventually, okay? But I'm talking about, you got like one Saturday in the entire month of April that's when you've got enough freedom to go fishing <laughs> relative to your other obligations. Which Saturday do you go? That sort of thing, right? So what you're looking for, uh, I'll, I'll show up a close up in a minute, but uh, the, the maple trees where I'm fishing today, all their buds have opened up. So all the maple trees have a red flower on their branches. That's a good sign that it's uh, there's been enough warm days for that to happen. Usually means there's enough warm days but the things trout eat are around and the trout are going to be feeding. Um, another great thing to look for is a stretch of days without rain. April tends to rain a lot here. We get a lot of rain in Nova Scotia. And if there's a lot of rain, the water levels are... I'm fishing in a river right now. Okay, nice beautiful river. Uh, if there's a lot of rain, the water levels are high. It's much harder to catch fish. Not impossible, but it's harder. Okay. Uh, so you want to have, you know, a stretch of days where there's been no rain, three, four, five days. Uh, or, you know, even if there has been, light rains don't matter. It's like heavy rain. If you've got a lot of heavy rain, I mean, you can go fishing if you want to, but, you know, <laughs> you know, it's harder to catch fish when there's been a lot of rain, the water levels are high. So you want lower water levels, okay? Uh, the other thing you're looking for is temperature. So even if it's getting down to freezing at night, you want double digits during the day. And any day that's warmer than the day before is always a good day to fish. Or I think today the high is 15. Maybe yesterday it was 14. But any day where you've got, you know, double digits, ideally. Sunny, because it creates a lot of heat and the water. And it activates the thing the trout or fish are looking for, right? It turns them in. I mean, the trout oscillates between being predator and prey. I mean, just, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ago, a bald eagle literally flew up this river. Um, not much higher than 20 feet off the ground. So the bald eagles fishing, right? I also noticed some um, uh, suckers going up the river, right? So the suckers are active, the, the predators are active. But anyway, the, the point I'm trying to make is the trout is either in predator mode or prey mode. And you want the trout to be in predator mode because then the trout is feeling confident it's not scared, and it's more likely to strike whatever you dangle in front of it. Uh, you know, of course, some baits are better than others, right? Uh, but if it's in prey mode, if it's just afraid of everything, they're hard to catch because they're not aggressive. So you want them in predator mode. And if it's warm enough and sunny enough, which activates all the things they eat, remember, this, these are wild animals, and they have to eat when they can eat, right? They can't go to the supermarket. Right, they gotta eat when it's time to eat. There might be just a, a short window every day 
when they can eat, right? And this time of year, I find it somewhere between uh, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning and maybe 4 o'clock in the afternoon uh, if you have a sunny day, right? The, the water spends the morning warming up. And, you know, like the, the idea is you watch movies and, and you think about fishing from movies. It's like, oh, you go fishing early in the morning, right? But for trout this time of year, uh, generally speaking, you're going to have better luck after the waters have a few hours to warm up so that the things that trout eat, insects, can start becoming active and minnows, I suppose. But even this time of year, not a lot of minnow action. It's really like insects. Um, if you put it in a minnow trap this time of year, you're not going to catch a lot of minnows. It's usually May when you start catching uh, dace and things like that and stickleback and so on in uh, minnow traps. And that's a great bait if you can get them. Uh, but yeah, you want that heat to get everything activated so that the trout start thinking like predators and they get aggressive and they just start hitting everything and they're not afraid. Okay, so you want sun, heat, double digits. And any day where you, like if you have to pick a Saturday or a Sunday, and Saturday is 12 Celsius, I'm gonna speak uh, in Celsius here, sorry Americans. Um, Saturday's 12 Celsius and Sunday's 14 Celsius, and they're both sunny days, I would go on the Sunday, because it's just a couple degrees warmer. Uh, any appreciable shift in temperature is gonna activate the prey insects, the, the prey organisms, and it's going to be a better day to go fishing. Uh, in terms of things to what to use for bait, um, and when I say bait, I mean baiting just means convincing something to strike a hook. Um, so all kinds of things will work this time of year. Uh, if I'm fishing with crank gear, uh, I tend to use a, I'll show you this stuff later on as we go along, but uh, a shiny spinner, gold or silver, usually with some beads that are red or orange. And a hook with a little bit of something on it. Um, a worm is great. Uh, bacon, which is what I'm using today because I'm in the woods for a couple of days and that's what I've got. I'm eating bacon. So a you, know, you cut it in the shape of a little tiny worm, right? A tiny sliver of bacon. Basically, it's a white, tasty, fatty thing. Gets their attention. They like it. A bear hook with bacon. If you got time, you're just sitting around camp and you're gonna chuck out a hook on a bobber, a little piece of bacon. You can catch a lot of fish pretty easily. That's how I got my supper last night. Just bacon and a hook and a bobber sort of thing. Uh, I was in a really good spot and the fish were jumping. That's the other thing. Uh, you know, any sign of the fish jumping is always good. Uh, they haven't started jumping yet. I haven't seen any rises yet. Um, seeing predators like bald eagles and ospreys out looking around, always a good sign, right? Um, but yeah, I'm talking about bait. So uh, a spinner or a spoon, something shiny, uh, something with a little bit of bait on it is also good. If you're using uh, fly fishing, uh, I find a hare's ear nymph or a muddler minnow or a woolly bugger. Um, this time of year, again, this time of year, right? Something that looks like a tiny minnow or a, a kind of, a, you know, the, the hare's ear nymph is a great imitation because it looks like many different types of aquatic insects. Uh, if you catch fish this time of year and you cut them open and look at what's in their stomach, it's just little tiny insects, all kinds of little bugs. That's what they're eating. They're eating aquatic insects this time of year, for the most part. Um, so you can imitate that. And the hare, I mean, there's many different types of nymphs um, but that's a good one. Also, sometimes if there, you notice some fly, I mean, great thing about fishing this time of year is that it's April. There's no black flies. There's no mosquitoes. There's no nothing. It's just wonderful. Right. Um, but uh, if you notice that there's some flying insects around, um, trying to do an imitation like stone fly, if you can get a stone fly imitation for a dry fly, that's a good one. But even this time of year, sometimes, um, and I hate to pump my own uh, province, but the Nova Scotia mayfly. It's just a black fly. It's a black dry fly. If you're going to dry fly fish, Nova Scotia mayfly can be deadly. And there's some places I fish, I'm not, this, this here, this is very pristine wilderness here. I find they'll hit just about anything here. Um, so <laughs> that's another thing. <laughs> you know, don't go to the place on the side of the road where everybody goes. You know, get, grab your compass and get in the woods and go somewhere remote in the middle of nowhere. You're going to have more success because nobody's fishing there. That's the kind of place I'm at here. Um, but yeah, even a Nova Scotia may mayfly, sometimes you'll see them rising and they're not biting anything, but they're rising 
And it means for whatever reason they're fixated on some fly that's in the middle of a hatch. Um, and this time of year, uh, a Nova Scotia mayfly can work. Anyway, I'm going to do some fishing now because I'm, I'm, I've talked enough. So uh, let's just go. All right, so we've got a nice deep pool here. And uh, it's hard to think there isn't something hanging around here. So I'll just try not to make too much noise. Do a few casts. See what we can make happen here. Oh, there's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. All right. Good. Nice trout. Get up on the shore. There we go. All right. There we go. Beautiful speckled trout. I'd say about uh, nine inches or so. I'm just gonna dispatch them and uh, see if I can get another one out of that hole. It's a great spot. All right, since I caught a trout on the first cast, I assume this is a good hole. So I'll do a little fly fishing. Now this is what they call a hare's ear nymph. Okay, it just looks like an aquatic insect. It looks like many different aquatic insects. So it's a good all-purpose lure. I mean, you can use a hare's ear nymph, hare's ear nymph all season, really. It's a remarkably uh, versatile uh, imitation. And I mean, I'm using a fly rod here, but this is this is cheap Canadian tire gear, Silstar, and I can't remember the brand of the reel, but this. When I bought this, and I bought this years ago, like, like in the 90s, but this was like, oh shoot. All right, I just lost my, just adjust that. Lost my leader there. Let me get that started. This is the kind of fly that sinks, it's not, it doesn't float, okay? Good. Um, but yeah, I bought this probably back in the 90s for, oh, it's like a $15 reel and a $20 rod. So, I mean, this is about as cheap as gear as you can get. Uh, generally speaking, you want to have uh, seven, eight feet of a rod. Any longer than that becomes unwieldy in a river. Uh, Here's your nymph sinks, doesn't float. And yeah, it just looks like an emerging aquatic insect. Uh, you know, an, an aquatic insect that is soon to become a fly of some kind, uh, some kind of mayfly, but not a mayfly yet. And, you know, they're kind of helpless this, at this stage of their development, so the trout will attack them pretty readily. That's assuming I can put one in front of a trout in a way that doesn't freak the trout out. I'm not the greatest fly angler in the world. When you're, um, Using a nymph, you're, you're, you're watching the end of your fly line to see if it moves. And it acts kind of like a bobber. You'll see it move that way, move away from you very quickly. And if it does, then you know that something's hit. And I don't know if they're after this today or if they want it. But it can be effective this time of year. And I saw them rising yesterday, so I know they're... They don't, they don't, rise means the, fly, uh, the trout are jumping. So I saw them jumping yesterday. They're not doing that yet today. But when they're rising, it means they're feeding on aquatic insects as a general rule. Shoot, I just hooked that tree. Oh, what a stroke of luck. I got it out of there. Okay. I'll work my way up here very carefully. I and mean, they're around. It might be that they just prefer the spinner, that they like the idea of a big, a big meal. And they're not interested in this nymph. Who knows? I just hooked another one. I tried the, the fly and I'm sure there's some imitation that the fish will be interested in, but I can't be bothered to tie it, to play around with different flies. I've got the bait. I mean, I always go fishing usually with a pack rod that's got crank gear 
and a fly rod. There's nothing more maddening than going trout fishing and there's some sort of hatch on and you can't catch anything because the fish don't want your bait. Um, but that being said, uh, generally speaking, the trout are usually hungrier for bait than they are for flies, but not always, it really depends. Um, but, you know, fly fishing is, it's like more of an, I mean, it, it can be a very effective way to catch fish and I've got a whole, oh, there's a nice one. Oh, I didn't get him. Came back. Nope. <laughs> there. Nope. <laughs> I lost him. <laughs> uh, fly fishing can be uh, an effective way to fish. And I'm just here trying to catch a meal. Um, you know, I, I don't tend to do a lot of, you know, fishing and fishing, you know, fishing for the sake of fishing. I, I tend to go fishing for the sake of... Oh, that's a nice trout. I just saw him go by it. Fishing for the sake of eating. <laughs> I enjoy fishing. But, uh, yeah. I tend to go fishing because I want to eat trout. And when I don't want to eat trout, I don't fish. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bring both gears with me. And I use whatever works. Whatever's working. Shoot. Not where I want to go. Not casting in the direction I want. I'm not used to using this rod, so I'm casting poorly. Yeah, there should be something over there. I might have spooked this hole. I just want three trout. That's all I want. A nice meal. For me, of this size anyway. I mean, if they were huge, it'd be a different proposition. Just had a bite there. Nope. Oh, he came right out of the water and I missed him. I don't know why they didn't want that fly. I think I've stung all the most aggressive fish in this hole. They might be shut down for the day. <laughs> Maybe down here. Holy smokes, am I ever hungry. I think it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm starving. I just had a light snack for lunch. Alright, I'm going to work this system up here. Somehow without falling in. Oh geez, she's deep here. <laughs> I'm going to go over my waders if I keep this up. Nothing. Oh, good God! <laughs> uh, that one looked like it had a bit of size. <laughs> Just to show you the range in sizes there. Smaller, bigger, biggest. Enough for a good meal. I noticed this on the shore too. Uh, if you can find these, if you know how and where to find them, these uh, freshwater clams are fantastic bait for just about anything, but they're great trout bait and they're, the meat inside of them tends to be tough and it stays on really well. I've never eaten one, uh, but uh, anyway, they're great bait for fish if you can find them. But anyway, that's it for my day's fishing. They didn't seem to want to want the, they didn't seem to want the fly, but they did like the, uh, this little piece of bacon. You can see that so the bacon's been worked over there's one piece of bacon cut all those fish and it's been worked over pretty hard so I think it's just about done. I think I'll donate this one to the river. Some lucky trout will have a delicious meal tonight eating that. Well yeah, you know I think people go overboard with this stuff in terms of uh, selling the products and that sort of thing. It, it doesn't take much. On fishing shows they tend to make you think it's the gear that catches the fish. But really, right place, right time, right place, right time, right day <laughs> is uh, the most important thing. And of course, just knowing how to keep a fish on when you've hooked it, and uh, you know, just experience it matters as well. But anyway, that's that's all it requires. Anyway, I think I'm going to head back to camp, have a beer, and uh, 
clean these fish and uh, have a nice night. So uh, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.